What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Board to Heal. I know, I know. We took a week off. I'm sorry, we had to. We were week one of the football season, but we are back, ready to talk wrestling. We have a lot to talk about. See, missing a week gives us more to talk about, right, Heavy T? It's true. It's true. It's usually how it works. Yeah. So, you know, we had Bash in Berlin. We gave our predictions. We only missed the one, which I feel bad because I could convinced you to go the other way. Yes. But it all I know. Again. You would have been undefeated. I know. I know. Overall, Bash in Berlin was good. Was it, you know, it didn't excite me as much as some, but it was, it was, uh, it was decent. You know what I mean? I it mean, was, look. Very some big. people some people are saying that it's WWE's worst pay-per-view of the year. Some people not not me. That guy. But in all honesty, if that's your worst pay-per-view of the year, you're having a pretty good year. You're doing something right. Yeah. Sure. I just like the fact that they straight up said, you know what? Screw it. We're just gonna have the terror twins just beat the crap out of each other for or out of them, really. For uh, what twenty minutes? <laughs> like, fine. It, it was something. I'm fine with uh, that. Get the crowd involved. It was exciting. The Germans yearned for it. Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> it was something. And I'm like, man, now what though? Because it seems like that's the end of that. You know what I mean? Like, where do you, where do you go from here with the storyline? But they've done a pretty good job of keeping it relevant and probably the most interesting storylines um, there is right now between the Terra Twins and the New Judgment Day and Finn Balor's evil stare, which is still the best in the business. That dude just looks like a like an evil leprechaun that's just waiting to just destroy your soul. <laughs> that's that's the I best mean, way. Yeah, it, <laughs> he's just and, he, and he's Irish, which makes it cr- even crazier. <laughs> but uh, I love it. I, he makes a really good bad guy. He's very no. Oh, he he's made a great yeah. bad guy. Yeah, great. He's bad. he's always made great, great heel. Bad guy. I guess. But yeah, he is. Yeah, I, I like that know. that it's all about him now, and he's saying that kind of like the the judgment day is now united and they're all equal but it's clearly he's the leader like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and we all know where that's going right <laughs> like um but for now it's great great cinema like this is must watch when the judgment day is is on raw so uh, we had this last week and we did have an aew of, event uh they had all in and now they have all out um next will be a, a nickelodeon all that I think uh, is coming next, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all out was pretty all out. Um, a lot less matches than that they've had before. Thank you goodness. But a lot of them were really, really long. We had MJF and the Daniel Garcia. Obviously they're going to fight again. This seems like it's going to be some sort of trilogy thing. They have bad blood and, and uh, yeah, great match by the way, really MJF incredible matches. Should Thanks. clarify that they have bad blood with each other, not they will be on bad blood. 100%. WWE. We, we, we will were... talk about bad blood later in this podcast, but for now, they don't like each other. For you know, they've turned on each other. They're it's um, it was a great match, but then we had a couple of attempted murders. Yes, um, literally, I think uh, Swerve Strickland may be, I think his funeral is tomorrow. Um, because yeah. that man looked dead, <laughs> he looked straight dead but um uh, brian danielson and the jack perry match obviously i knew jack perry had no chance but uh just the uh debacle of turning on brian danielson of all people and putting a bag over his head and almost the BCC, killing him. Man. Yeah. It's, it's honestly they they in, in a way they did kill him because yeah brian danielson has if you remember him and uh, especially towards the end of his wwe run he's very eco-friendly so the fact that they used a plastic bag to kill him <laughs> He might actually be dead inside. Did they have oh. to pay 15 cents for that bag? Um, uh, it was in Chicago, I believe. It's probably not. Probably not in Chicago. Yeah, in California, did, yeah, definitely. California, you'll be arrested if you see a plastic <laughs> bag. <laughs> it's true. Um, and then the lights went out, and the unsanctioned match between Swerve, Strickland, and Hangman Adam Page. And uh, about everything you could think of happened, every type of weapon you could think of happened. So much we're at the end. Hangman pulled out a syringe and injected it into Swerve's mouth, which pretty much, I don't know if it poisoned him or whatever, but just put him down. I'm hoping and, they had uh, like cotton candy cough syrup. <laughs> something like that. I think, did he like pull out his grill and beat him with it too? It was everything. A c- cinder blocks were involved. Um, a piece of Swerve's burnt down house 
as a stake. That's right. I forgot from, that happened. From yeah. Hangman burning down his childhood home that Swerve just bought. Um, <laughs> just bought. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> it was Get that insurance check, my guy. <laughs> yeah, I hope he did. Um, but yeah, Swerve down and out. Uh, I, I don't know if this kind of like give him a little bit of a break now because he's been one of the main um, card headliners for almost every event that they've had over the last few months. But for, uh, it was good. Uh, it was very violent, um, and they went over the top, but it was very, very enjoyable, and I enjoyed it. So kudos again, once again, for AEW, the end of time. We'll be saying this every podcast we do is that I don't even know what time they're on Wednesdays or what channel they're on, but their pay-per-views are incredible. Yeah. <laughs> no one watches the, the weekly shows, but the pay-per-views are really good. Uh, let's talk about some... Let's get back to WWE now. We're, we're done with AEW for about another month because I don't think they have another uh, pay-per-view coming out for a while. Raw this last weekend had a return of a legend. A legend that I remember when I was uh, wrestling when I was a little young lad. So before you mention the legend, mm -hmm. I don't want to bury the lead here, but I'm kind okay. of excited. Okay. Because I believe it's at the end of September till the end of the year. Raw is going back to two hours. Yeah, Finally. Not three hours, which I thought was way Finally. too long. Yeah, Three hours is way too long. And I remember when they made that decision, people were like, this is a mistake. And it lasted, what, 10 years? Yeah. Something like that. And they're finally going. And they announced that when it goes to Netflix, it's going to be two hours. Perfect. But we'll, fine with it'll be two hours commercial free, right? Uh, I don't, I don't know how they're gonna do that. It might be one of those things where like they have like a look in box, and they play like a thirty second ad real quick. That's better than what they they have now because they literally just cut away from. I mean, that. you're on normal TV, kind of. Yeah, so, yeah. But yeah, no, two two hours, huge, huge. Yeah, less. Huge. You, you can tell like when they're trying to kill time and they have those long drawn out conversations in the middle of the ring. And it's just like, man, they, you know, less of those will be nice, to be honest. Uh, yeah, short and, and simple to the point is, is what I need. It's so funny because you, uh, as far as I know, you haven't been to a wrestling show, a WWE show specifically recently. No. So when they go to commercial, like say it, if somebody walks out, they do their entrance and everything, and then it cuts to commercial right after, the whole arena goes black, like some video plays on like the board or whatever. And then they start to play the music again, and then it comes back to make it seem like, oh, the music has been playing like this entire time. So, so it, I mean, yeah, how many times can you hear it? It's just me, Ooze, for five minutes straight. I would shoot myself. Like, <laughs> Everyone just eating for five Yeah, minutes. Dude, from eating right. for five minutes, it's a hell of a workout. Let's be honest. Yeah, I know, right? The, the, so, yeet, the, the yeet workout. You're getting um, so, Depending on how far you're going your yeets, you might be getting some Well, let's not get into him yet because he's going to be a big part of this show. Yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. true, true. But um, I do want to talk about – yeah, and uh, Joe Tessitore, by the way, fantastic. Oh, he's great. Dude, okay. Great. So real quick, I saw this, – this is from the Raw, not this past week, but last week. Joe Tessitore's first Raw. Yeah. I was dying laughing because I saw a Twitter post that says an assailant will come out, and they always have, like, the black hoodie or whatever. Mm -hmm. So assailant will come out, and Michael Cole and Pat McAfee, oh, my God, who is it? Who is this masked man? And then they unveil, like, it's Drew McIntyre. Oh, my God. Joe, the, Joe, Des Joe, Joe Desitor. <laughs> the greatest call ever, not, dude. Does I not died. beat around the bush. Joe Tessitore, that's Drew McIntyre in a hoodie before he's, <laughs> before he's even taking it off. Some of the funniest, I do one of the funniest tweets I saw. Hilarious. Stuff, I saw dude. that live and I was dying. Yeah. It's, like, it's Drew McIntyre in a hoodie. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I loved it, dude. Keep doing your thing, Joe. No, that's he's, great. He's great. Uh, Absolutely uh, great. Oh, like oh, like over the years, he's been great at everything he's done. He's uh, his voice is very recognizable, yeah. and he's very quick witted and perfect for this role. Um, love it. Uh, Brett the Hitman Hart though made yes. an appearance on Raw. It was a great appearance. It was mostly because of the the guy who was next opposed to him. Mm -hmm. Oh man! So <laughs> so Go Brett comes out. And, you know, they have him standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gunther because Gunther's going to end up facing Sami Zayn at Bad Blood, which I'm actually okay with. I think this yeah. will be a good match. But I'm dying laughing 
when Gunther straight up tells Hart to his face, you're my second favorite wrestler behind the greatest of all time. Yep. Bill Goldberg. I <laughs> died laughing. That is like <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that is the absolute most heelish thing he and could have said. Because Gunther if you is remember, so great, man. He's so great. Yeah. As a champion, he is great. He's like, amazing as a champion. Because if you I don't know if you remember this. When Brett went over to WCW. Goldberg essentially ended his career hmm. with that concussion kick and Bret Hart like hates hate, like <laughs> what? you could have you could have Hulk Hogan say the most racist thing and then you have Bret Hart fuck Bill Goldberg for no reason. <laughs> so for Gunther to come out and say that I'm dying laughing dude so funny so unintentionally funny it was oh and, and great. And then, of course, Sami Zayn came out and said, yeah. whoa, don't disrespect the legend. We all know Brett the Hitman Hart's like Sami Zayn's idol. And um, a Johnny Gaudreau jersey, by the way. Yeah, shout out to that. But terrible what happened. Um, yeah. I'm still sick about it, actually. But um, I'm not even lying because I love watching him play hockey. But that's not all another day for another story. Yeah. Or another story for another day. But so now we have Sami Zayn and Gunther. Um, what do you... I, honestly i'm cool with it like i was fine with gunther dropping the ic title to zane at mania mm -hmm. um they had a great yeah, yeah, match yeah. they have great chemistry in the ring so when you really think about it like yeah sammy's challenging for the title but if you do a little bit of a deep dive this is gunther's retribution this is what he's getting back he's like i'm gonna get back at you by beating the shit out of you at bad blood and retaining yeah. my title, I'm not losing to you again. I could see that angle. It just seems a little weird because uh, Sammy has, has had a hard time with his international title with the dog. And uh, now he goes right into the World Heavyweight Championship. It, it, it's just kind of like, yeah. But it is Sammy Zayn. He's very likable. I'm, I'm fine so, with it. I, I and and again, so the WrestleMania rematch is... It, is is there so that hasn't been predicted for bad blood yet or ha hasn't been put on the card but it's pretty clear uh that's where they're going with that and i'm interested to see if bret hart will play a role in this i doubt it i, I think that, think that hart just it? showed up because they, they were in canada it's nice to good get something out of the calgary crowd so yeah no, I, I think he played his part the way he should okay even he, he, the goldberg thing is still so funny you know what we you know what we will have at bad blood of bad blood we're gonna have taylor swift <laughs> i doubt it unless travis is there um i think we're gonna have jay uso yeah fighting in the internet intercontinental championship yeah that's that's Ron gonna happen breaker because he won the uh four man or six man whatever that random tournament which Braun was just walking around with his belt, just being Braun, just talking smack to every contestant in it the whole time, which is the best part of the whole thing. Um, so, well, so, okay, hold on. I wouldn't say that was the best part because so this was Jay Uso versus Ilya Dragunov versus Pete Dunne versus Braun Strowman. Yes. And who comes out again? Bronson Reed hitting a tsunami yeah. <laughs> out of nowhere to Braun Strowman. Great move. And like, Considering he's a bigger dude, they're both really, big dudes. What? Well, what? Well, okay, yeah. But considering Bronson Reed is a bigger guy, it's hard for him to come out as like a surprise. Yeah, uh, in that way. And the cameraman and the crew did a really good job, at least on TV wise, of making him a surprise. Like, oh my god, like it's Bronson Reed, and then hitting a tsunami out of nowhere. <laughs> actually, really well played out. Um, I do. I'm. I'm actually becoming a huge fan of Bronson Reed. Guy. If you're keeping track, that's uh, I think 16 tsunamis over the last four weeks. <laughs> Which would defeat nations. <laughs> yeah, Earlier. that would defeat yeah. nations. Um, it was it was a good match though. Uh, it was a good match. I had to watch it the next day because it was too late for me here. Um, so I because it, but if it was two hours, I'd be able to watch it. See, I, I see what you're saying. Hey, I see what you're it's saying. hard. It's hard when you know you have Raw going up against Monday Night Football. It's a little tricky. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, Jay Uso won. So here we are again. And uh, Jay Uso searching for his first singles championship. 
Will Rikishi say something? Find out next week. <laughs> main event, Jay Uso in another main event. Yet every time he gets to the main event, what happens? He uh, he wins. No, he oh. loses, and he's no. always the one that's in the main event right after the person just won the title, which is like almost a guarantee that he's gonna lose again because it happened when Priest won his title. Um, it happened one time before I don't remember who and now it's happened again hmm. here because Braun Breaker just won the title I legitimately now. don't think I ever thought about that didn't he face didn't he go after Logan Paul well Logan Paul had it for a while I think it was but that's when he was first becoming but yeah it was right after I, I think he had gotten it yeah huh so yeah, I don't know what, new every day <laughs> like, yep. I never, but never, legit never noticed that he's a crowd drawer He's a uh, uh, and a merch He's incredibly seller. Incredibly over, yeah. A merch seller. Uh, every other person in the crowd, even on SmackDown, was wearing a Yeet shirt. Um, they were yeeting in Germany. He wasn't even there. <laughs> 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 and and uh, yeah, so it looks like that's what we're gonna get. I don't think Uso was gonna win. I and mean, Braun is too good right now, and he just he's you he just can't switch it that fast. He got that dog in him. You know what I mean? So here we are again. So all the Jey Uso fans are going to be disappointed. Uh, it's kind of almost there. So and what you're like, saying what is now? Rikishi will say something. Yes, of course. I know next week what it is. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> see what they're doing with this. I thought maybe he'd team up with Sami Zayn, but they are doing something with this. And here's what they're doing. Jay is now involved in the Judgment Day twin twins saga. Yes. Because he came on as a surprise tag team partner with Damien, and they won, which I I love that by the way, that was awesome. Um, and then last week he came to their aid, or this this week he came to their aid before his match as well. So he's involved in this. Now we know he's in love with Rhea Ripley, mm -hmm. like like in in love with her. So they're trying to get him involved in this, and he seems like the weirdest dude to be in this. <laughs> And this this view, like he does not fit it at all. Okay, to to any side. <laughs> but here we are. You think with this they're trying to push him too much to different ways to try to see what fits, and they really don't have kind of a narrative for him until they figure out what Roman Reigns is doing. Is that kind of where they're going with this? Because it seems like that's what they're doing to me. But he's nah. selling merch. He's selling merch. He's selling. No, nah, because because they they hinted the whole Jay and Rhea thing. They did before yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, they broke he, up. And I think they did it earlier this year, too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he's been trying to slide into her DMs for a minute. Yeah, which is incredibly funny because he's <laughs> married in real life. So, well, it, <laughs> yeah. So is Dominique Mysterio. That's fair. Okay, I'll give you that. That's fair. Um, so I, I think they're just playing it off a little bit. Like he is going to come, he is going to come back into the bloodline at some point because I'm fully expecting, and this is just me fantasy booking this. But I'm fully expecting old bloodline versus new bloodline at Survivor Series in November. Yeah. So they're going to have to start. You know, we're in the middle of September already. They're going to have yeah. to start getting that train moving. And where's Jimmy? Uh, just a bit. Yeah. Where's Where's Jimmy? Jimmy's still hurt. So still hurt. he, you know, he could sh honestly he could show up at Bad Blood. I I don't know what he would do mm -hmm. necessarily, but he could show up there. And obviously, Sami Zayn will be there as well. Yeah, now the show is slated for October 5th. Uh, today is only September 12th, so they still got about like two, three weeks left. Yeah. But uh, it's it's going to be interesting because Jimmy probably shows up to uh, Bad Blood. I'm looking forward to that. And, and hopefully not as a, um enemy to his twin brother, I think. It's, you know what, it's going to be interesting because, and, and we'll get to this in a second, but if what i've read is the supposed main event for bad blood he probably comes in during that time and that could get real interesting yeah i i, I just I, where has he been uh, obviously hurt but yeah. it's just that a lot of people consider him and jay the best tag team duo of all time at least in the last Recently. uh it it's one of it's, them. it's with them and the new day within like the last decade for sure yeah yeah um and what we're going to get to at bad blood is damien priest and finn balor yeah. which we've kind of been waiting for um how many south of heavens do you think finn balor is going to hit 
Um, or I think the over take. under is uh, <laughs> ten, and maybe a razor's edge um, as well in there. Um, shout out to Damian Priest for uh, giving tribute to Razor Ramon, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Rest in peace. Um, will Jey Uso play a part in this? I, I see. I don't know. So if that's going to be at Bad Blood, maybe not. Okay. Um. Yeah. If that's the match that's specifically going to be at Bad Blood, then maybe not. Because, like I said, that probably he probably helps out a little bit. Well, first off, he has he would probably have his own match. Yeah, against in the Intercontinental yeah, Title yeah, yeah, match. Yeah. And second, let's say hypothetically he doesn't win, or I guess even if he does win, he could be involved in the main event of that show. So it's honestly there's there's a couple ways they could go with jay it's good it's gonna be interesting it is and we have the women's world championship which has been announced for bad blood again the rematch of Liv morgan and rhea ripley i'm gonna give my prediction for this now i think rhea wins i think damien loses against finn but i mean obviously in two weeks i may change my my tune seeing what happens on raw and smackdown and and, and whatnot but uh there's just uh T- to me, Liv has kind of become, yeah, she's the women's world champion. But ever since she's become this part of the Judgment Day, she's kind of second fiddle to the Judgment Day. Like, it's almost like, oh, there she is. She just comes out, gets her quick hit on Rhea, and then runs away. Like, they haven't really been putting her at the forefront of as as a women's world champion, which is odd to me, I guess, because she's the women's world champ. Like, Nia Jax is a queen on the other side in SmackDown, right? Like... True. She's the way they portray her compared to Liv. Liv's like almost like the what Carlito was to the Judgment Day now to the yeah, Judgment yeah. Day. I the think, side piece, you know what I mean? I think it ha- oh, 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 oh. Uh, I think it helps that she's definitely attached to Dom for the most part. Yeah, because Dom Dom is the Judgment Day. So yeah, I and- guess in a way, I, I I see what you're getting at because in a way you could say it is Judgment Day plus. Liv Morgan, mm-hmm. but I think the fact that Dom is probably going to help her retain, I say probably, that's an official prediction. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, I mean, that helps out in her favor. And you know what question I'm going to ask next? If would Dom... I do something with Liv Morgan? Yes, I would. <laughs> if Dom comes out to help her retain, why wouldn't Jey Uso come out and help Rhea? Oh. So now you got like Jay doing three things on the card. So, like... <laughs> I'm just one of these because uh, I'm trying to figure out where they're going with them, and I have all these questions because of this new storyline with within the Judgment Day. Him and Priest are now friends. Who would have thought that would ever happen? And now you know he's obviously in love with Rhea. Rhea has no man, just her her brother, the bisexual Undertaker. Nice. <laughs> so interesting just to think about obviously they're going to be involved in the next few raws but before this happens because so far the card for bad blood is very once again raw centric and judgment day centric so we'll have to figure all that out but that's going to be fun to watch that was one of my favorite SummerSlam matches was Rhea live and they opened with it it was great. oh yeah great great match. sorry you missed it because you can't read times but <laughs> CBS put the time an hour later. Okay, so they screwed me. All right, don't get mad at me. They screwed me. All right, before we move on to a quick Wyatt Six, Chad G- G- Gable, I do want to say they are making Dom look stronger in the ring, especially good. with a, a big win over Dragon Lee this last Monday. Yeah. Uh, and look good doing it. So they're giving yeah. him more, you know, I guess. Uh, like, honestly, like if you're credit, gonna... cred. Because <laughs> Finn is the leader, right? But if you're putting anybody behind Finn, like Dom is the clear number two in that group. Yeah, sorry, I mean, JD, sorry, Carlito and Carl- JD. Carlito just guys. eats an apple and says stupid things, and, and loves PS fives, man. Gets gets d- destroyed <laughs> by the Terror Twins, but yeah, he does love his PS five. My favorite one when Priest was mad at him, and this was a few weeks ago. He's like, "But look, I'm playing as you, and I'm beating Jey Uso." <laughs> I love that guy so much. Um, we had another big matchup, which opened surprisingly raw, and we'll talk about it. The Wyatt Six against American Lame, aka American Made. That name um, is not getting over. <laughs> I don't care. Um, is this the end of this saga? 
or is this just be the beginning? I don't know if it's necessarily the end. They might do <sighs> American Made might say like, "Hey, we want you at Bad Blood. This is going to happen." Because I mean, th- this is kind of a Bad Blood feud. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, it was a street fight too. It was a street, and fight. it was a good street fight. Like that that's the great. other thing too is that. You know, I'm like when when people say like, "Oh, it's a street fight," I'm just like, oh, "Yeah, what it's is like this, it's AEW." Like, <laughs> well, because I think for WWE, it just got so watered down over the years. Like it yeah. was just like, oh, "This is dumb." Oh no, this was... one was good. Yeah, no, it really was... good. And like, I don't know if you saw the side by side video, but on one side you have uh, Rowan. He's grabbing... I love him. He's my yeah. favorite. You have him grabbing the barricade and start beating the dudes with it. <laughs> and on the other side, you have Uncle Howdy in the rocking chair, just watching what Rowan is doing and just laughing. And I'm yeah. like, "This is this is cinema. It's great. It, this is so good." Yeah. So I I love the Wyatt Six, dude. I don't think I there's a single it. person who's disappointed with the way that this long awaited return um, has been. I think no, they've done a really been... good job with it. It's been incredible so far. Hopefully it stays that way. Yeah, and man, just... And they're all really good wrestlers. All the YSX. Oh, no, yeah, they're all great yeah, wrestlers. Joe Gacy, Dexter Loomis, Nikki Cross. Uh, the only concern I have is that Rowan has a tendency to be injury prone. But, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully he stays a little healthy. Just, just please. I beg of you. Please. Well, he does do a lot of things for a big man um True. <laughs> and he was throwing he was throwing a lot of things around so <laughs> that could be why but it was good um we'll see if it continues or do they go after somebody else i'm not sure um but it was a good match kind of uh it seemed almost like an ending to it though in a way because there's like all of them together and then uncle howdy came in at the end and it was a street fight yeah. so we could do everything and uh, it, it could be you never know it, it could very well be but Yep, I'm loving it. Love the Wyatt Six, and I don't think anyone does not get chills when the lights go out, the lights come on, or the the Firefly lights, that is, and the song, the piano notes start playing. I think it's beautiful. a it's a, a beautiful thing. Um, chills right now. <laughs> of course. I just got chills too. Dang it. All right, let's go into some SmackDown stuff and talk about where we can see some things going here with the... Uh, I don't I we got all of raw right obviously yeah i think for, we the, got the cm punk to drew mcintyre oh Cell match is the last one but we, that we'll is, be talking about that next week that's gonna be great we'll get into that um well so i probably should mention there's some uh friendship bracelet controversy I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> what so now? i guess so i guess the chick that originally made it um wwe took the friendship bracelet and started selling it on their website which is fine Mm -hmm. like so the chick that made it was like hey i'm not asking for anything but like a heads up would have been kind of cool um and apparently there was a lot of backlash for them putting it up that within 24 hours they pulled it and then they re-put it up but instead of it saying larry and aj now it just says cm punk so that's bracelet gate interesting bracelet gate 2024 just give the girl some money you guys make billions jesus it's like the funny thing is is that she said like she's like i don't even want money i just you know it would have been kind of cool to get a heads up or like to say or put my name in it or something or no i I think her big thing was that she originally made the bracelet like just for punk and want everybody wearing it yeah yeah that that might be part of it but i mean hey i'm i'm kind of on her side dude like give her yeah, hands off. i'm with you hey, if i was there i would just say give me money yeah. you're gonna make a ton of money off it at least give me like a a, a percentage Jeez. Yeah. well what she's cool doing? for not wanting anything out of it she just wanted to know like i get it respect fair fair over at smackdown the, the return of giovanna vinci giovanni vinci uh did not go um i actually it? I actually well, thought it was it, great. Was it very long? <laughs> no, it was it lasted three seconds. Yep. So he's uh he's facing Apollo Cruz and he's in the middle of taking off like his uh track jacket, I guess you could say, or whatever. And as he's taking it off, Cruz basically goes up to him, puts him in a roll off, and then one two like, the match is over in like ten <laughs> seconds. Honestly, uh, I thought it was great. I thought because Vinci is coming out as like this cocky heel and everything like that. 
So what's a good way to make him look like really bad as a cocky heel? Just have him pin a test. I actually enjoyed it. So I, it, it was fun. It no, was it was fun. funny. Yeah, I loved it. So we have a new speed champion, right? <laughs> Paul Cruz. Yeah, I guess, right? <laughs> Jeez. Um, it was great. Bailey versus Tiffany Stratton. I was I was cool with this. I I love Tiff Stratton so much, dude. Mm-hmm. Bro, you're gonna have me that one of these days you're gonna text me and my ringtone is gonna be like, is Tiffy time? <laughs> like I, I love I absolutely love Tiffany Stratton. And she's a solid wrestler, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hey, Bailey does get the win, and that is uh that's my girl, that's everybody's girl, that's your daughter's girl. So there we go. And that's also setting up a Nia Jax Bailey, I would say rematch, probably, most likely uh something like that now we're getting to the time where tiffy might start uh really really because i know she's kind of like att- attempted to cash in money in the bank but we're getting to the time where like okay we're we're getting kind of close yeah it's gonna so happen. well and, and obviously people think she will turn on nia Jax. i mean that's i think she does yeah seems inevitable at, at this point but it's good to see bailey back and uh, bailey hopefully fighting again for a belt that I think she deserves because she's just better than Nia Jax. And Bailey winning in general. Everybody is better than Nia Jax, in my opinion. Um, Street Profits and DIY versus Bloodline. Bloodline, obviously. It's the Bloodline. Wins. Yeah. But Jacob Fett, too. He's going to yeah, kill everybody. They, yeah, he, he did. And uh, they, they have to have some sort of belt while they're in power. Um, yeah. So it was an okay match. It wasn't anything yeah, it was, crazy. It, it did its job. Yeah, there were, I think there was only like the three matches. That was it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We had uh, the long ass Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens talking forever about how they love each other so much. And now, if I remember correctly, um, <laughs> L.A. Knight wasn't on this episode. I believe he was not. No, it was so mostly it Kevin Owens and and uh, Cody Rhodes talking about their match, and and then obviously yeah. Sola Sokoa got involved and. He said that it was Fatu who actually deserved the title shot, not Sokoa, but then which led to Sokoa and Rhodes in a is it a cage match? Oh, for uh, the opening of USA. Correct. Yeah, no, that is going to be happening. So it is going to be solo next Friday, and, right? Uh, no, this Friday. Yeah, I think that is this Friday. I think the last. Hey, no, it is this was, Friday. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It is this. Yeah, Friday. it's 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 this Friday because the, the last episode was last week of it. On yeah. Friday. Thank S- goodness I can actually hear when they talk, no matter what the crowd is chanting. Yeah, you can get away <laughs> with a little bit more on cable. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. So no, that is going to be a steel cage match. Steel cage on Friday on SmackDown, which is great. But so here's here's the rumor. Supposedly, there were some rumors backstage saying that Triple H basically thinks Solo just isn't all that great. Um, it's fair. I think that's it's true, but it's really hard. And like, I'll go back to this. I remember when they were saying like, "Oh, they didn't want to bring on Jacob Fatu just yet because they're worried that he might outshine Solo." And I was like, "Nah, he can't be like that good." No, he's that good. Immediately, he so, did. Like, he, Immediately. Immediately, I was like, "Oh, their concerns were very valid. <laughs> He's actually yeah. pretty damn good." So, but that's that's what the rumor is, and so the rumor, uh, I guess, and not necessarily main event, but the rumored championship match uh, was going to be Solo and Cody again. Mm-hmm. But now it is reportedly being switched to Jacob Fatu and Cody, which I think number one is great, and number two, I'll be honest, it probably is going to be the main event. Cody Rhodes is from Atlanta. His dad is Southern Wrestling like the southern wrestling legends like him and rick flair and that's it so i'd imagine that this probably does end up being the main event uh since it is his hometown uh that being it. yeah that being it. said this is where you could have jimmy j mm-hmm. roman and maybe sammy, sammy. well no it would because it would be the original bloodline so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with Gunther and Sammy or how they push this, but that could be your original bloodline coming back, stopping Fatu from winning the title. And then that's where you set up uh war games at a survivor series. Mm-hmm. So it's, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to get there, but I feel that's the direction they're leaning towards. Also going to be honest, Jacob Fatu in a one-on-one versus Cody Rhodes. 
I yearn for this. Yeah. This yeah. needs to happen. That will be the uh, main event <laughs> for sure. In the in the words of the homies, it's going to be a movie. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Let's make it happen. Really really good. Um also this week on SmackDown it looks like we're going to have a uh, Kevin Owens and a special guest. We don't know who. It's probably going to be Randy Orton versus A Town Down Under. <laughs> it's so funny cuz people are like Kevin Owens is having a special guest. Who could it be? And it's like me watching SmackDown for the last six months. <laughs> oh, gee, I wonder who it could be. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, of course it's going to be Randy Orton. Who else would it be? Cue the music. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can hear it playing right now, dude. I can hear them testing it from wherever they're going to be at. Like, yeah, dude, like, don't, duh, it's going to be Randy. We all know this. <laughs> and we're also getting um, part five. No, I'm not talking about a Jason movie. Uh, a draw day and Carmelo Hayes. Series now tied two to two. So hey, this keep it going. Yeah, they are they are fun to watch. I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, they, they could turn into so they could turn into a tag team. So uh God, I want to say this is maybe five or six years ago. WWE did something very similar with Sheamus and Cesaro. Um now what they did is they put him in a feud and they ended up having like a best of seven feud. And I think the last one, because they were tied three three. And I believe the last one ended up being like a no contest. And then they became a tag team. They became the bar afterwards. And they were a really good tag team. So that could be something similar that they're doing with Carmelo and Andrade. They're having them do like a best of five, maybe, or a best of seven. Mm -hmm. And like, hey, we're going to, you guys work really well together. We're going to make you guys form a tag team uh, right after. And that would, I'd be kind of fine with that. That'd be cool. Gives them both something to do. Yeah. For now. No, and like they're good too. Like they're oh, they're really, really good. Yeah, no, they're really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm okay with it. It's just five, like part like and it's like five weeks in a row. <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> let them cook. Plus, them they cook. were in the money in the bank against each other too yeah, before true. that. True, so true. They, they've literally fought for like six straight weeks. Let them cook. Um, I'm loving it. We already talked about obviously Randy Orton will be the mystery partner. We think Gee, I wonder if, who that mystery if, partner is. If I had to put money on it, I would say that would be it. And obviously, Bro, if I have to put team. money on it, I'm putting my house on it. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and obviously, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory have zero chance. <laughs> yeah. And you know what the funny thing is, is that I am just and, and I, I know WWE's trying to like put them over. I do not like either one of those dudes. Like, I cannot stand either Grayson Waller or Austin Theory. I personally obviously, think- Austin Theory is a little bit better <laughs> but grace i personally just, think i i think theory sucks like he's not he's not oh great. he's not a great wrestler he's just no not as annoying <laughs> yeah it's just it's it's not it's not good man it's just not good but uh yeah no the quicker they dispatch of those two the better i hope this match is two minutes so <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, hoping for two minutes so there you go man i think we're all caught up in the latest news was there anything else uh that um, your eye? Anything you saw not, red? Not that I can think of at the moment, other than Raw being two hours, which thank the Lord, mm-hmm. and SmackDown going to USA. Man, we really were in hell with Vince under charge or charge. <laughs> My God. Like he, he didn't know he what was going on. He was too busy. Nah, never mind. <laughs> I mean, like it, it's wild because like the WWE we have now. Versus the WWE that we had in, I won't, I won't count COVID, so I'll say 2019. Those d- are not the same at all. It is wild what a difference of five year makes and a couple sexual assault lawsuits. It is wild the difference that those things make. Yeah, speaking of, Mc, of McMahon, there is some news actually. In- oh, oh, I'm so dumb. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the trailer. Yep. Where the McMahon uh, documentary dropped. That'll be released September 25th on Netflix. Um, I'm I'm interested. I, I read think... that some people have already said it's described as a six-part burial. I need to see it to believe it because... <laughs> and we will. Net... We'll watch it and then we'll yeah. review it on the show, obviously. But Netflix's uh, sports documentaries are, are not good. Um, they usually whoever the subject is it kind of paints them in like a pretty good light i remember when the like the damien priest one was really good well what i'm thinking netflix one specifically 
Oh yeah, so they're, like they're, the untold series. <laughs> yeah. Well, like yeah. So I remember watching the Swamp Kings one with the Florida Gators. Yeah. Didn't even finish it. That thing sucked. It was bad. I and then the Johnny Manziel one was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting, but, it, but not yeah, great. Yeah, Manziel is like a good guy, and I'm like, please stop doing that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I'm skeptical, but the two producers, I believe, are Bill Simmons mm-hmm. and the guy who produced Tiger King. <laughs> Tiger King was great, and he has a so, new one that he just did on on HBO about the the chimp lady dude that thing is oh, crazy God. yes yeah all right yeah so i'm in uh, i'm intrigued by this uh i'll see it but hey a burial of vince mcmahon i'm fine with i never want to see that dude again <laughs> yeah I, I, don't think, like, I don't think he's coming back yeah he'll be i think it's memes. fairly fairly safe to say he's not he'll be the meme king forever and that is it i'm fine his memes are hilarious that's it that's all he's got going for yeah so That'll be exciting. We'll talk about it, of course, when it comes out. We'll we'll give it a watch and we'll uh, give our review on it and uh, about what we think about the uh, the wonderful uh, documentary, aka the burial, as people are calling it. I thought Vince. you were going to say the wonderful Vince McMahon. I was like, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Not today, my friend. He's Not perfect, man. You got today. me today. All right. Well, that does it. We went through. We came. We conquered the latest news and latest drama in Born to Heal. Enjoy your week of wrestling. That is at Heavy T on air. I'm at Edward Rouse. We'll be back next week for another great episode of myself and everyone's favorite heel, Heavy T. Boom.